Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. I am not, because I keep having visions of a uh, Crimson King and a giant turtle, and it's really freaking me out. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, uh, today we're going to be talking about Stephen King. It is no secret that I am quite a big fan of his books. I have read, I want to say about 30 of them, maybe give or take. So I feel pretty well read in his bibliography at this point, and I really like recommending his books to other people. There's a problem though. Where to start? Because you see, ever since Stephen King started writing, he never stopped. How the f do you write so many books so fast? <laughs> well over 60 novels, several different collections, You're saying, oh, why don't you just start wherever? Find the book you like? Yeah, well, here's the thing. Mr. King decided to do this. You see, all of his books are connected. Most of them share a universe taking place on the same world. Ones that don't take place within the greater multiverse of King. And this all comes together in the Dark Tower series, King's uh, epic fantasy work that a lot of people would like to read, but get a bit overwhelmed when they see it comes with a lot of baggage. There are all of these reading lists all over the internet on how you should read Stephen King. And I'm here today to tell you what I would recommend. I have a nifty little secret that I like to tell people. You ready for it? You ready? 90% of his books are meant to be standalones and it doesn't actually matter what order you start in or how you read them. So yeah, uh, despite this, there's not actually a huge reason why you should read Stephen King in complete order. How most of his books are connected are through very small little cameos and Easter eggs. When people say all his works are connected, you might be like, holy crap, I gotta start from the first one, I gotta read them all in order, but I, wa I wanna read Revival, I really, really wanna read Revival before anything else. That's like, you can, yeah, yeah, you can. If Misery's your first book, there's like a sentence that references The Shining. That's it. That's what most of these connections are in all of these books. The Dead Zone has a single reference to Carrie. It has a single reference to the Dead Zone. Like most of these books, you it really does not matter at all. Now, there are some exceptions, of course. You know, his actual series, The Talisman and the Black House. You'll want to read those in order. The Mr. Mercedes trilogy, followed by The Outsider and If It Bleeds. I've actually only read The Outsider out of all of these. I kind of regret it, because while it is like its own story, it does spoil major plot points from, from the Mr. Mercedes trilogy. Oops. And of course, The Shining, Doctor Sleep. You know, be aware of which ones are the actual, like, sequels and continuations. And of course, you'll want to read the Dark Tower series in order. And... I might get into some trouble for this, but I also think it's perfectly reasonable to only read the Dark Tower series by itself. Yeah, so the thing is, like, people always like to come up with their crazy Dark Tower reading orders, which involve a whole ton of Stephen King's bibliography, because they are quite heavily connected. Like, to the point where, like, a lot of characters from Stephen King's other books show up in the Dark Tower and are very, very important. People always say you'll want to read Salem's Lot, you'll want to read The Stand, you'll want to read It, you'll want to read Insomnia, you'll want to read Hearts of Atlantis, because then you'll get, like, the full, the full picture, you'll understand everything that's going on. And now listen, here's the thing. I love Stephen King. I think people should read all his books. Like, j just go for it, okay? Yeah. But you really don't have to, because uh, you see, The Dark Tower, while it does connect to all of these books very heavily at times, Stephen King is not an idiot. Like, he knows there are people going to be reading this that have not read the other books, because that's like an insane thing to ask. Like, he explains everything in the books. Like, like he does. When a character from another book shows up, like, he tells you who they are, where they're from, and gives their backstory. Here's here's a thing. I haven't actually read Insomnia or Hearts of Atlantis, but I 100% understood everything that was happening in these books. So yeah, I do think it is super cool how he connects everything, and I definitely feel, like, accomplished when, like, a reference to one of his other books shows up, and I understand it, but a lot of the times, even if I haven't read the book that's being referenced, I still understand it, because they aren't, like, super subtle. I don't know, I just think that, like, if you're overwhelmed about getting into Stephen King and feel like you have all this extra homework to do just to read that one book you want to, just chill, it's not very deep, you don't really have to go on these huge reading journeys. However, some people like to, and that's awesome. And, you know, if you do want to indulge yourself in the entire multiverse, obviously the best way to do that would be starting from the beginning, starting from Carrie. Because one way, of course, to ensure that you understand all of these references throughout all of his stories is to read them in order. And when it does come to the Dark Tower, while I stand by what I said, you should still probably read Salem's Lot. <laughs> Like, you know, um, it is 
a, like an incredible book. It's one of his best books, in my opinion. And I think it will be a bit more satisfying uh, if you read The Dark Tower having read that. I would also recommend The Stand. You know, if you're if you're up for the challenge, it's, it's a big boy. But that's another one that I think, you know, gives you a lot of extra context that could be, that could be fun. And while I don't see this one often brought up, uh, when, you know, talking about which books you should read for The Dark Tower. And just in general, for like the entire Stephen King multiverse, I think that The Shining is really, really important. Not really in its story, because it's very self-contained, but it's mainly just the introduction to The Shining, because The Shining is like Stephen King's power system. It's what, like, is in most of his books, uh, whether they call it The Shining or not. Oftentimes, they don't even, like, say what it is. Like, some character could just have a premonition, and if you've read The Shining, you're like, oh, that's The Shining. It's just something that's present in so many of his stories that uh, I think... I think it's good to have, you know, the full context on what it is. I also happen to think it's one of his best books as well. There is one exception to all of this, though, and I will gatekeep it until the end of time. Later, a book he released very recently. I think it's really fun, a really uh, great, quick, enjoyable book. It's like 200 pages. Read it first. And you're saying, what? You're giving me a thousand page book homework to read this 200 page one? Yes. Read it before later. So yeah, that's pretty much my guns. If you're looking for like a definitive place to start, I would probably say like The Shining, his 70s books, Salem's Lot, The Dead Zone, The Stand, Firestarter, Pet Cemetery, Misery, all just like fantastic books. Uh, and really just find the one that where the premise appeals to you the most. And if you vibe with Stephen King's style, I would definitely check out his other stuff. And if you're only interested in The Dark Tower, again, you can just read The Dark Tower. It's a very, very fantastic and epic and weird series that I think both fans of Stephen King and High Fantasy will really enjoy. So yeah, that about does it for this one. Uh, I am actually going to be getting back into Stephen King soon. I'm going to be reading his newest book, Fairy Tale. After I do that, I'm going to be back with a tier list video ranking all of the Stephen King books that I have read. You know, the, all the ones I really love, some of the ones I wasn't too big on. So yeah, you can look forward to that. Leave some of your favorite King stories in the comments down below. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon.